Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby, and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. Today's video is another Spider Farmer SF300 LED grow light update. This is month three. Today we're going to have a look around inside and do a little bit of a tour and I'm going to show you everything that's happened in the last three months of using this awesome grow light. I have had a lot of success. I have had a few issues, all my own doing of course. I have no issues with the light itself at this time. I think it's a really strong, really great grow light for the money to be honest. There's a lot of LED replacement bulb style grow light or grow lamps I should say that cost as much if not more than this even and other fixtures and so far I've used um, several of those. I've used a smaller LED grow light before I used a grow light grow lamp before this um, in my setup that you guys knew before this light came to me and now I've used this and I can honestly say this is the best of the three this is my favorite of the three and I have had the most results from this light than any of the other ones as you can see everything inside is looking pretty good I have had some light damage I did have some of my plants a little too high up when I put this light up I really didn't think about how powerful it was um, it looked bright it was bright and for the first month I didn't really run any shade netting on it um, definitely should have done that I added a small strip to the back last month and this month I've actually added a little bit more so we'll get the camera off the tripod here in just a moment and take a look at that and get into the tank itself and look at the plants because that's really where the proof is the proof is in the pudding as they say so anyhow let me straighten this thing out and get this off of its stand and we will take a look above now as you can see I have a full layer of shade net now and I still have that strip along the back there as well the bigger piece I've actually cascaded down the side because this light actually does shine down the wall therefore down this side of the tank and I believe that's where some of my issues came in I had some light going through the glass uh, refracting at whatever angle and I do believe that's what caused some of the burning of the Lepanthes so let's get this opened up and we'll get in here and take a nice look at the plants so all of our Cuthbert Sony eyes are still up here at the top they're some of my brightest loving plants in this tank along with this little dendrobium leucocyanum and they are all doing really really well I don't think we've seen this really since I unboxed it so let's actually take a nice close look at this little guy this is my dendrobium leucocyanum that I got from the Tarzan group it is full of new roots and it's pushing on three new growths that it has put on since it has been in my care really really exciting it is probably my brightest most loving orchid it has a spot directly under the grow lamp outside of that second layer of shade cloth and as you can see it is doing remarkably well the Cuthbert Sony eyes are all doing quite nicely as well I've got lots and lots of good growth going on them blooms coming on them blooms and growth coming on them and I am happy to say that even my little straggly sad one that I got from Bloomify not very long ago is actually still hanging in there and it appears to be growing um, despite all the adversity that it has faced so that is a great thing and another testament to good conditions and good lighting and what it will do for an orchid that's trying to recover a lot of plants that I end up having in recovery especially any Pleurothalid type, Mastivalia, Dracula, anything like that they all end up coming in this tank where the humidity is high, the lighting is good, and there is tons and tons of airflow. They really do seem to enjoy it. Some of the bigger changes I've made, I have pulled some of my Mastivalias up actually from down here closer to the bottom. 
and I've traded them out with some of the Lepanthes and slid them down. That is the former spot of my Lepanthes Caledicteon, and that is my Masdevalia Winlandiana. As you can see, it's been growing really, really well. It is happy as a clam. It was actually sitting down here below it um, on this left wall. Let's see, down here in this area. But um, I really honestly think that now that it's a little bit more shaded, it's not gonna have any issues growing there. As well, it has never bloomed for me, though it's definitely a strong and healthy plant. So I'm hoping that a little bit of extra light will help induce the blooms for this Mazdevalia. The um, Bulbophyllums that I've been trying to rescue in here, they're also doing quite well. This thing is just going nuts. This is my Bulbophyllum odontopedalum. It's got one, two, three, four, five directions of growth now. The Cirapedalum pomilio here has two or three directions of growth. It seems to be doing really, really well as well. And um, everything else that is up in this quadrant, this plant is really cool. This is my Phymatidium talansianoides, and I got this from Tarzan a few months back, and I don't know if you guys can see or not, but that thing has almost already doubled in size. Really, really happy with the conditions in the tank, and I can honestly say since I've added the light, it has just exploded. Really, really cool little plant. It definitely looks like a Talansia or an air plant, except for the fact that it does have very orchid-like roots, and it does produce awesome little orchid blooms. Moving down a bit further, all these other guys, lush and healthy. Pleurothallus rostratissima here is actually doing really, really well. This thing has lost all of its roots. It was a very, very sad and unhappy plant. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but back there, all these little keikis have produced tons and tons of roots that are starting to attach to the mount and they themselves are starting to produce additional growths pretty much making them not keikis anymore so I'm probably honestly just gonna let this thing go leave it be let it just eat this mount and see what happens um, be sure to keep my eye on that moss and not let it go bad again because that's how I lost the base of this plant and all of the roots again I cannot stress to you guys enough if you grow pleurothalids of any kind whether it's a pleurothalus proper a mastervalia a Dracula, a Lepanthes, a Restrepia, anything down that line, anything in that family, you must, must, must keep an eye on your media and make sure it does not go off. These plants will dump their roots and once you have to recover them, it's a very slow process. You basically have to start over. Having that said, some of my sad news. This is my Lepanthes caledicteon. This is what it looks like when you have light damage. I had a subscriber send me a message not too long ago and they sent me pictures of leaves that look not too different from this. I have two things that happened here. I've been using my sprayer quite a bit more. It got careless and I definitely definitely got some fertilizer and stuff on the leaves and I believe that started to cause some of the damage in conjunction with the fact that this was way up here in this very very bright light I think that it really just took a nosedive if you notice all the burning and stuff is on this side for the most part I believe what was happening like I mentioned before is that light was coming in from the side of the tank which is why I added the shade cloths outside all the way down the side of this tank to help keep the light from shining off the wall and from shining directly in through the side of that glass at a weird angle and causing burns like this. Fortunately enough this plant is very strong it's got lots and lots of new growths coming and lots of new growths that have established without any burns or any issues so I do think we're going to be okay I don't think we've lost it but just like this sad little Lepanthes telepagona flora right now with its very, very purple leaves. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but very, very purple leaves. I had to move it down as well. It was getting just a little bit too much light. Um, if you're not careful with these guys, you'll notice it. 
usually start to turn pinkish or purplish first. These are great examples. That is just about any of your Lepanthes. For the most part, they do have an anthocyanin reaction when they get too much light and they will let you know. Um, the other Lepanthes over here seem to be doing really well. Some of them have really actually reacted quite well to the addition of light. This Lepanthes dominguensis, for example, has really exploded. So has the little Insectifolia, Insectiflora, I'm sorry. And the Hystracina down here is now deeply shaded, but I'm telling you, it is still doing really, really well. Those leaves start to go purple a bit. I took a different Lepanthes that actually likes a little bit more light and hung it over top of it to provide some plant shade, and now it is very, very happy. So, anyhow, scrolling down a little bit further, we'll get into the depths here, into the smoke, and we will take a look at some of these. The Dracula Lotax is doing fantastic. My Lepanthes Prediosa, that is this little pretty guy here, as you can see, suffered some of the same damage that the Caledictyon had. They were hanging right next to each other. It is no surprise to me. Very similar plants. So now it has earned itself a spot down low in the shade and it seems to be recovering nicely. It's pushed out a few new growths and I don't see any issues or any purpling on those leaves. The Lepanthes Sherry Brideham down here. Same story. You can really tell there. Started to get quite purple and now is back to a lovely green color now that it's been recessed down into the shade quite a bit. Finally, I have my Mastavelia Exquisita. Now, if this isn't a shining example of a happy plant, I don't know what is, but you can tell now I've got all these new growths, just tons and tons and tons of new growth, and it's finally starting to come back into bud. So that is our first of hopefully many but that plant, guys, is just really taking off. That is definitely my second happiest Mastavelia at this time, and I couldn't be more excited. I know I said finally, but we may as well take a look at this guy. This is the Bulbophyllum speciosum, and maybe that shot will do this plant justice. It's really taken off. All that light green growth in there is new growth. It has produced nine flowers since the springtime of this year and it still has more coming. I've never seen this plant perform this well. When it came to me it was about this size and I promptly killed about half of it. It's been, um, gosh, almost three years now I've had this plant and it's finally, finally, finally acting like it really should act. It really loves the conditions of the tank and again, I know that light is far away but you can see just how bright it is on these plants down here at the bottom of this tank. So that's that. That is my little tour. Everything, as I said, is going relatively well, except of course for the few light issues that we looked at that I myself caused by not being careful enough. The uh, only other issue I have is I have a few plants like my Bulbophyllum tentacular from here that are in terrible, terrible need of a media update, but that is a whole other issue, and we will probably take a look at that here because I think that is gonna be one of our next plants that we try out on Tree Fern. I have an idea. It's got a really small mount as it is in here, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that theme. I'm gonna cut a little sliver or wedge of the thicker Tree Fern and see how it does in my tank. I have one plant right now on it, that is this Lepanthes helicocephala replacement plant. I'm sorry, that is my leftover little piece of Lepanthes helicocephala. That's the only living piece that's left of my original one, unfortunately, and I figured, what the hay. I have the replacement down here, doing really well from Tarzane that I got not long ago. And we are giving this guy a day in court on tree fern to see how the panthes like it. So, so far, so good. I am excited to say I may have two of these plants, which is great because it's one of my favorite lepanthes. But the future is yet to be determined. Anyhow, thank you so much again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Again, that is my review for 
my Spider Farmer SF300 LED grow light. I really do love this thing guys, check it out on Amazon. There will be a link to their sales pages in the description of this video and you guys can go see for yourselves. I believe Fernanda Nascimento, she also picked up one of these to use in the fall and winter time in her house. I'm excited to see how it does for her because she grows more than just orchids. I've had a few people ask me how this does for other plants. Um, I don't know. I don't grow anything else with it. But I can say that the mosses love it. I'm sure though other things will do well. I know that I've seen other people growing cannabis with this light, um, tomatoes, other veggies with this light online and on the website. So I do not think that there is any real limitations to what you can grow with any grow light. Um, to be honest, so I don't see why there would be any difference with this one. Anyhow, that's it for today, guys. Again, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And until next time, please stay safe and happy growing.